Hey, Marcel Hoog from Switzerland. Yesterday, a big win in the Boston Marathon, the 2021 Marathon. You ran a, a 118.11, uh, really, truly unbelievable time. Uh, so talented, Marcel. I can't, I can't even express how many times I watched you uh, in the Paralympics, four golds this, uh, this time around in Tokyo. But let's talk a little bit about yesterday. Uh, it seemed pretty clear that you were on a mission to try and set a record yesterday. Yeah. Hi. Hello. First, uh, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it was my goal yesterday to have a, a fast race, uh, to go all in from the start, uh, push as fast and hard as I can, uh, try to have a good, um, a, a fast time. And yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. Um, it went very well, and uh, the time is, is quite fast. I understand the conditions were not exactly perfect in, in terms of uh, uh, there being a little bit of a, they alluded to a little bit of a headwind, and it was pretty humid. And just the day before, you ran Chicago, where you went to the wire with uh, Daniel Romanchuk, and uh, he just nipped you. But how hard was it getting two marathons in back-to-back -back like that, flying to Boston and getting ready to go again? Yeah, it was uh, really challenging. Um, it was uh, also a, a very nice experience for me to do two marathons in two days. Uh, it was uh, it was tough. Um, it was not only the the marathon itself to do, but it's all the stuff you have we have to to organize and to think about and traveling. Uh, but uh, we did it and. Uh, uh, everything went well. I felt good at the start lines. Um, so yeah, it was a good, good experience. Marcel, before we get into, uh, you know, a little bit of the controversy of the day, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Boston course, because obviously you're very knowledgeable. You've won this race uh, a number of times, 2015 through 2018. You've got the course record at 118.03. But, um, Talking a little bit about the course and how it moves elevationally, it seems like you're the kind of guy who really likes to capitalize on getting those downhills in, maximizing your speed and opening your gap. Is that your technique? Uh, yeah, yesterday uh, I tried to go um, fast from the beginning, to go fast in the downhill and try to, to have a gap. Um at the moment, I, I feel quite comfortable also with my new racing chair, which is uh, uh, seems to be fast in the downhill. Um, and so, yeah, um, I really like the course um, with down, downhill, but it's also challenging with uphills, uh, with the uh, heartbreak hill in the end. It's, it's really tough. So uh, it has everything, um, but it's, yeah, it's many, many... Uh, roads are straight straight on so it's a very fast course and uh yeah i really i really like the course yeah and it can be a tough course too marcel you know people always like to uh point out as uh you know how you can go and get a record at boston instantaneously but that doesn't always happen because you know boston can have uh the crossing headwind it can have the driving rains so and and heartbreak hill is not necessarily a gimme that's uh that's a series of four pretty tough little climbs at a tough moment in the race yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the first part with the downhill are very fast, but then you have to think about uh, the about uh, the hills. Uh, you have to still to have some energy left. Uh, they are really challenging. They are three, four, four climbs, and then yeah, it, it's it's difficult to to see where you are standing during the course uh, from from the time. So yesterday also in halfway, I, I thought I, I might be a little bit um, uh, slower than the course record. But in the end, the uh, last three kilometers, I recognized that I might be just a few seconds under the record. So then I, I pushed very hard. I gave everything I have le had left. My man, I have to tell you, I watched that race and uh, and I saw 
just how difficult it was for you. And I, and I saw that you were upset at the finish line and I started to uh, do a little social media and people were noticing. So it looked like uh, you, you more or less disappeared from the frame and nobody knew what happened to you. And, and right where you're supposed to make that right hand turn to head up to Boylston, you ended up going straight. And ironically, this has happened to two other racers, Tom Sellers and Krieg Shabor. And I'm just really kind of curious. I mean, knowing the course, having one on the course, how, how does that happen? How, how do you get distracted to the point where you got off course? Yeah, it's difficult to say how it happened. Uh, uh, it obviously my, was my mistake. Uh, I know the course. I should know that there is the right turn. But um, as I told you before, uh, the last three kilometers, I recognized that I could do the course record by just maybe some second, seconds. And so then I just uh, put my head down and uh, gave everything. I, I went all in. And yeah, I followed the, the lead car uh, all the time. Uh, and so... Yeah, in the end, I was just pushing that hard that I didn't realize that the, the lead vehicle uh, went straight and I should go to the right side. Um, yeah, or I, I, yeah, then I, I went uh, straight uh, and then I had to stop and return to the course and, and go back and then. Yeah, I was uh, really upset because um, I, I lost maybe 20 or more seconds with this mistake. Um, otherwise, if that not would happen, uh, then uh, I think I was on the course record. Oh, I know, my man. I could tell, too, because uh, you only missed the record by eight seconds. You ran uh, a 118.11 yesterday. Your previous best in 2017 was 118.03. Uh, it was so close and so tight, and I felt bad for you because I could see uh, clearly that people were consoling you at the finish line, and uh, you did look visibly upset, but... I have a feeling that you're going to be back. And uh, if there's ever uh, the smallest of tailwinds, I have a feeling you're going to crack it. Yeah, I definitely hope um, that I have a, another chance. Then I want to try it. Um, I hope next chance will be next year here in Boston. Um, so, yeah, I have a new goal now to have, uh, have this uh, record next time. Hey, you know, so many people have been talking about you and, and your new chair. And I just want to, well, I've got you here. I'd just like to talk a little bit about it. You know, people are saying that it's uh, maybe one of the fastest, best, best stiffest chairs on, on the market. Are you feeling like, uh, you know, I know that you're a super fit athlete, but do you feel like the, the chair is, is, is giving you a little bit of a boost to make you even better? Yeah, definitely. Um, the chair feels feels great, um, obviously, and in the uh, yeah, in the downhill it was uh, really fast because of the aerodynamic. It's 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 good, a very good aerodynamic. Also, the stiffness makes a difference, and so yeah, I think uh, at the moment um, everything fits together. Uh, my my shape is great. Um, the chair is is really fast and feels great. I also have a little bit new um, seating position in the chair, which feels great. And um, yeah, at the moment, uh, everything is, is perfect. Marcel Hoog, I'd like to really thank you for joining us today. Uh, you know, fabulous race yesterday. The winner of the 2021 Boston Marathon at a time of 118.11, Switzerland's Marcel Hoog. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.